Today, the Pathfinders are at Stanton Drew. Stanton Drew is one of the largest stone circles in the world. There's also a smaller stone circle and also an, uh, an array of stones called the Cove by the Druid Arms Pub. So let's have a look at Stanton Drew. Enter. <laughs> This is a uh, sort of notice board showing you the different uh, circles of Stanton Drew. Uh, we have the Great Circle, which is the largest one, the North East Circle down by the River Chu, and just over there we have the South West Circle. Now what's interesting about Stanton Drew is the legend goes that there was actually a wedding party. And basically, after midnight, when the, the music kept was stopped, the fiddler didn't want to perform on a Sunday. A handsome replacement started uh, playing instead. He was the devil in disguise. The devil played faster and faster until the exhausted dancers uh, fell over and they were turned to stone. So there you go, the wedding party of St. Andrew. It's an old legend. Um, he was a fiddler. He was a fiddler, apparently, the devil. The devil's well known for playing the fiddle, actually, on many things. And then in the distance behind us, we have an old hill fort, if you pan around Richard, in the distance there, called Maze Knoll. And that's a very famous old hill fort, so we'll, we'll hopefully get to have a look up there as well. Anyway, let's have a look at Stanton Drew. Okay, so this is the first stone you come to of the Great Circle at Stanton Drew. And there is a legend that goes, you should never try and count all of the circle, all of the stones in the circle, because a hideous fate will become upon you. So I'm not going to try counting them, and hopefully these two won't. I How many them. are here? I don't actually know. I've never tried to count them. No. Nobody knows. Is it bad luck to guess? How many there are? You can guess. If you do count them, you might be accused of maths. Thirty-eight. Very windy. Windy. Look at this legend. Okay, so here is potentially an example of what they used to do with stone circles and the stones themselves. Because it's been proved that um, around or in, in the inner circle, the, the land inside the circles are always great pasture land. And what they used to do was that they would put seeds on top of the stones for blessings, and the stones would charge the seeds for next year's heart for the crops for next year. So that's um, whether this all it isn't, but it's sort of quite an interesting point here. I'm sure it is. we do over sort of standing stones in sacred places and this is about as sacred as they're going to get so here we go Rob do you want to start? <laughs> okay so the three wise monkeys see no evil hear no evil and speak no evil but an interesting fact about Stanton Drew which I, I personally find quite amazing it's one of the most underrated and unspoke of sort of centres of stone circles and megalithic 
uh, history because as we said there's within this area in this field there's a two there. circles just over there's a third one and then you've got the cove but it's just not really as well known as, ma as many of the other places and in fact in Somerset you speak to a lot of people they've never heard of it let alone the rest of the country or the world so I'm quite glad that we've come here today and also while we're here it looks like they've had a um um, a um, summer solstice or spring solstice equinox celebration here because as you can see on the rocks there's um there's been sort of painted powder everywhere so that could tie in with the spring the spring tide grass on the stone over there so it could be to do with um Easter and her festival and her um, celebrations and actually, earlier on, we were by True Magna Lake and we saw two herons fly past and they're two of her birds. They were egrets, they, weren't they? Egrets, sorry, or herons. Same family. Any bird will do. Same family. Long they? legs. They were long white neck. egrets. White egrets. Water birds. White egrets. Yeah. I'm the twitcher. So white egrets, like this. Right. Ostara. Ostara. Each uh, season come. Another fact, I've slept in that house over there. Do they know that? <laughs> Oh. This could be a long trip for you. <laughs> He's Goldilocks, or he used to be before his hair fell out. Okay, something that just interests us a lot is the geopolymer theory, which we want to thank Paul Cook for because he's Bungaroosh. He's a man who taught us about Bungaroosh and uh, geopolymer. And Larry. But as you look on this rock here, it's got all these little um, porous holes, um, little pot marks and divots. And we were all told, obviously, that these stones, uh, these stones are chiseled from a quarry and moved over miles and miles and miles of land. But actually, if you really think about it, and it does go against the whole megalithic grain, and I love megaliths, absolutely love them, but logically speaking, I'm talking about levitating stones and moving them over hundreds of miles. The giant theory. The giant theory. And don't get me wrong, I 100% believe they were giants. Me too. But whether they carried them across miles and miles and miles of land, or they were literally just poured into moulds uh, like they do modern day shuttering, is exactly the same concept. It does make an awful lot more sense. I'll tell you what caused this. Diamond rabbits. The legend of the diamond rabbit, they're like the diamond tipped angle grinder blades, they can just bore through anything. Yeah. And they have been seen around here on the uh, winter uh, and summer solstices. Very, very rare, but personally, I think that is what it's them burrowing Spot. to lay their diamond eggs. So, we've got an interesting thing here in Stonehenge, they talk of Woodhenge. Well, within the great circle here, they've got a geophysical survey plot. And there was um, literally hundreds of posts, 67 metres uh, wide. 4,500 years ago. Ages. Give or take. Give or take. A few percent. Should we have a look at that tree? Have a look at this tree. Old tree, yeah. So something of interest and also something quite sad that this tree has, has come down now but it's absolutely ancient it could even be as old as the stone circle itself because if you try to count the rings as you go in there's literally hundreds and hundreds of rings so it's a, a very old um a very old monument indeed Okay, so we are at the final stone circle, which is called the Southwest Circle. 
a lot smaller. I don't really know how this all fits in together. I don't think anyone really knows. What with the story on the other ones? Well, with just with the whole thing. Just at a higher point. Yeah, it's a higher point. So perhaps uh, the, the elite pagans used to come up here, the leaders. It was definitely a much smaller. I mean, it was probably a separate raid to the main party. Yeah, more VIP area. It should have been the VIP area. Very important pagans. Very, very important, important pagans. pagans. But the thing is. There's all these places are on major conjunctions of ley lines and, and um, power power centers of uh, of the earth or Gaia or Mother Earth as it's known. Um, and we've been very lucky to I mean everyone's lucky to come down here. It's not and with an eye shot as well. There's a pub called the Druid, which kind of like yeah, that's not the pub. There. The pub's over there. But at the Druid Arms, there ha there is there is the cove, which are three more standing stones and. They're massive, uh, really big stones, so we will go and we'll have a look. But see if Phil's exaggerating. See if I'm exaggerating, we're not, which I'm not. But I think the is. pagans were the order. We'll decide. Scott thinks the pagans were the order. Right then, off we go to the next. On to the Knox. Just to prove what back-breaking work it was moving these stones up here, part of the vertebrae of one of the pagans who tried lifting this on his own, was removed and left inside. Gruesome. He well, tried. He tried to. He tried, tried to back out of it, but they wouldn't let him. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here in St Andrew Church, we found a lovely old picture with the cove and the church. But this gentleman here is William Stukeley, and he's like the godfather of basically the sort of written down and mapped megalithic worlds. He went all over the country and he noted and actually did artwork. I think he did this himself, Stukeley, of, uh, of the cove. So that's a lovely find, we're very lucky to have found this one. Here we are at St Mary the Virgin Church in Stanton Drew and if you look very closely up there that's got to be a good from base to the top maybe 12 foot doorway for the giants that used to live here how certain are you of that 47 percent sure so sure just from the size of it so john st low may well have used this door he would have been able to run through this without whacking his head on the top so mm. makes sense and the giants that moved the stones probably came in here for refreshments well, there, are, use your toilet. there are toilets in there, aren't there? Toilets, so, yeah. 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 Okay. We've come to the rear southern quarter of the church and we found a fourth gargoyle that matches the three on the uh, west facing uh, side just up there. This one's even got teeth. That's how intricately carved it is. Freaky. Why would they have had teeth? Uh, so it could gnash the downpipe. Yeah. And sort of chop up all the moss with his choppers. Also, I spoke about uh, yew trees in Burnham Church and in Stanton Drew Church, and obviously, we've got some pretty old goings on in and around the uh, Stanton Drew area. You've got three massive yew trees. No me trees. You and you and you. <laughs> oh no.
So I was saying about um, yew trees at Burnham Church, and you always find them, and they're sort of signs of ancient goings on. And obviously at Stanton and Drew, we've got some pretty old uh, things happening. And in the church here at Stanton and Drew, we've got three beautiful old yew trees. The, um, the old things haven't aren't happening; they've happened. Well, they are happening because they're still alive. Oh yeah, I suppose. Um, so there you go, three yew trees from the past. Thank you, Chuck. Another interesting part of the whole Stan and Drew landscape is this beautiful old thatched cottage. It's actually octagonal and it was a toll house from the road between True, uh, True Magna and Pensford and at the top there you've got two hares which are basically um, hares are the goddess Istra that was one of her animals and they basically depict springtime because her festival has just been 21st and 22nd of March which I think was probably why we've got the sort of painted powder down at the stones and it's called the festival is called Ostara and basically it was uh, the festival of spring when the spring started so the equinox and there you go the octagonal turnpike house and the hairs are boxing it looks like on the top is that to signify the start of spring and yeah i guess so it's definitely to do with the start of spring fight over the women hairs could, yeah it could be like a ritual a mating ritual um i'm not sure about that but it's definitely all all connected 100 percent. anyway the go. turnpike octagonal fairy house So we're at Maze Knoll, which is one of the highest points of the hills around here. And just down the, there is Dundry. Behind uh, Richards is Bristol. But as we look at the, the knoll itself, it's known as the Trump. It's, look, it's got these ridges, which I think you know, it's how it's been built. But it's underneath, if you were to dig down, you find like a dry stone wall effect like we found in another part of North Somerset. Well. We're going to go up the top and have a look, and it's all part of the environment that we were in at Stanton Drew. And this is a Bronze Age hill fort. So it's got some really deep history, and there are these Bronze Age hill forts dotted around the country all over the place from that uh, civilization. So let's go and have a closer look. So on closer inspection of Mays Knoll and the, what's known as the Trump, I personally think, I don't know about you guys, that this is another barrow because it's so long and thin, unlike an actual hill fort where they would have had a settlement perhaps. Um, but yeah, because of the way it's, it's built, and you can see there's rocks, there's stones all the way through it, but they've been they've been placed like a dry stone wall. And if you were to take a, like a section of this out, I think you'll find it goes all the way down. It's like a, a, a structure. Uh, it doesn't take a great deal of time for grass and whatnot to settle into these places. And it may have even originally, well, that's a tough one to say. They probably would have just been a stone structure. And over time, grass deposits and seeds and whatnot. It's probably a big cavernous void inside there yeah. with, uh tombs and things well not even tombs because on all these places like uh, west kennet long barrow which is uh, rob's uh, famous uh, landmark and stony littleton which isn't too far from here either you can actually go inside and they weren't tombs they were like shelters they'd have individual little um like pens for each people for each family i guess um but it's amazing to come up here because from from down behind you Richard we, we can see Stanton Drew from down there 
and you can see this part from all the way around um it's it's just so different it looks a lot wider i mean you can't really tell until you get on top of it just how thin it is and i think you'll find this is just another barrow part of the barrow sort of culture and where are we off to next we are going to down the pub the, the, Druid, pub. the Druid Arms pub where we will find the cove which are three massive standing stones and the sacred gammon and the sacred gammon of the gods um has the common market come to Stanton Druid the common market is on its way apparently yeah and that's a nod to the Wurzels because it's one of their zongs about Zomerzet like drink up the Zyder and Mount Zion Okay, so we have come to the Cove, which is part of the Stan and Drew experience. And it's in the car park, garden that's not, it's in the garden of the Druid's Arms pub. And we'll go and have a look after that. So let's check out the Cove. The story goes of the stoats. Does it? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> the story goes of the cove that this part of the wedding party, and basically the wedding party guest danced on into a Sunday when it should have stopped. And the devil was there and he turned them to stone. Mm -hmm. Now we want to know which stone do you think is the bride? I think it's that one laid down with her legs open, but I'm not sure. I think you've ended this on a bit of a bad note there, Phil. Can <laughs> we try and rescue it now quickly? No. Yeah. That's definitely the parson. Yeah. The parson's nose. But once again, as I said earlier, a massive stone. And I think you'll find, Scott, is that or not massive? That's huge. It's massive. Mm. And so is this the final part of the stone circle formations? And This is the final part of our tour of Stanton Drew. So anyway, do you want to sign this off? And we'll, no, because uh... we've got another legendary thing to show you in a what? minute. About half past five. The gammon. We're not going to do it in the pub, are we? That'll look well weird. We'll just we'll say goodbye in the pub. Yeah. Don't we? Well, if you want to. We have done in the past. Well, that's what we do. The past. It's all we do. So is that it for the, the stone? I'm a bit, I feel a bit let down. You built it right up. That's not, this isn't that great what you said. What about these? Yeah. Well, I think it's bloody... Do you want to do it again? It's because we've seen a lot of stains. I think it's bloody They're brilliant. It's hard to I do think it's brilliant. Excited. And if you look behind you, there's May's Howl look up on the hill. Where we've just been. The thing is, nobody really knows the history. Um, people have their ideas, and people will tell you stories from the past. But... The sign, Definitely mystical. The sign over there says... This was a wedding party, and because the party carried on past midnight on Saturday into Sunday, when the devil turned up, he the devil said, Oh, Marils! Would this have been stood up originally, this stone? Uh, or is that, is that part of I the... think it might have been a roof for there. Oh, Ooh. okay. I think Dol it might have been like a little a marriage archway. A dolmen, they call and that. Decorated with flowers. Yes, but a it's, dolmen. So, a dolmen. it's so old, it would have nobody been a roof. knows. Well, actually, in theory, this could be the roof, and there could be a building underneath. And have you noticed there's something very untoward oh, here? Oh, God. <laughs> we don't know whether someone's left a deposit, or whether that's actually some sort of fungus. I think that's sick. But this could have been the... Um, like really good. They could have consummated the marriage just there. I want to touch it. Yeah, Scott. And uh, on that note, shall we... Uh, Get something you... to eat. Like, yeah. So... Smell it, smell it, smell it. Uh, we just like to say thank you as usual. Oh, and also, by the way, guys, we have something we need to tell you all. 
We have something very new in the Pathfinders family. Very exciting. Very exciting. What is it? Can't wait to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> is the Pathfinders.com. Pathfinders.com. Oh, com. yeah. That the new website. We, we'll website. do it. The Pathfinders.com. And uh, on there, we I've already done a blog already, but we should be having blogs about certain stuff. Another one will be up this week. And eventually, and you can buy some merch. Eventually, there'll be some merch, and there'll also be stuff about our music. Because uh, and when we've been fishing, you can buy some perch. Uh, we are we are the Pathfinders, and um, that's our basically we've gone from the Auto Sleeper Legend, which sort of still exists in Wrap the pa up, in the past, but now we're the Pathfinders, aren't we? Well and truly. Well and truly. Later. Over and out. You've been Ciao. found. See you soon from Staten Drew. Mm.